does it ever seem like every other artist around you has such consistent and impeccable output, both in their studio and social medias, while you struggle to make art on a regular basis and sometimes let your social medias sit quiet for weeks or even months? It's kind of like super disheartening, isn't it? Well, don't worry because you are not alone. For today's paint and chat, I'm going to be using my adorable little landscape sketchbook with this nice thick watercolor paper and my absolute favorite super yummy jelly gouaches. In our uber busy and hectic modern world of digitally sharing art, to humans by pleasing a computer algorithm, <laughs> it can be pretty hard sometimes to tell at what rate artists are truly making art, like in real life, which can give you the feeling of somehow like never ever being able to keep up. But honestly, rather than thinking of the most prolific and ideal artists being these somehow like art making machines that never need rest or get burnt out or have other things come up in their lives that take away time from art making. Think about them as folks who have most likely just figured out how to tune in and use their own high output and low rest rhythms with just really good capability. In case you're not familiar with the term ebb and flow, it very much applies to art making. Basically, the idiom free dictionary describes it as a decline and increase, constant fluctuations, or more commonly as the ebb and flow of something is the way that it continuously changes, especially in its amount or level. Life has ebb and flow, right? We're constantly changing. Things are constantly fluctuating, whether it's season or time of day, right? But also within our lives, sometimes we get really into something or we get into a habit or we fall out of a habit, or sometimes maybe that habit has to do with, you know, how warm or cold it is outside, or sometimes it has to do with the level of other work or other engagement in our lives. Like basically we can have consistent schedules, you know, that stay relatively the same or maybe the same for that year or whatnot. But life and just everything in general, all thoughts, feelings, like our good mood, bad mood, you know, high energy, low energy, all of those things, they fluctuate, they come and they go. But algorithms have no love for fluctuation. So when I'm saying that there is an ebb and flow to artists that the algorithm doesn't understand, basically using that ebb and flow to your advantage is the way to become a more successful artist as far as more consistent output. Think of ebb and flow like the tides of the ocean. The tide comes in every day and the tide goes out every day. And when it comes in, there's certain activity and animals and things that use that opportunity. And when the tide goes out, there are certain animals and activities and things that use that opportunity. So one is not better or worse than the other, and you need each one in order to make the other thing possible. Just like you need productivity as much as you need rest. The first thing to fully understand about yourself and literally everybody else is that you cannot be productive 100% of the time. It's just not possible. I know I am guilty myself of saying like there are 16 hours in a day and I need to eat and do human stuff. So that means I have 13 hours to be productive. Well, that's a really nice idea and everything, but it's not a reality. The truth is, is that People have certain flows every day. So you will have certain times of your day where you're really feeling very productive and like you're really feeling very inspired and motivated and you want to move and get things done and your brain is just brimming with ideas and potentials. And there will be other times of your day where you just literally need to rest. You need to not mentally like work so hard. You need to just do something that kind of, you know, occupies the time, maybe take a break, maybe take a little self-care time, that kind of thing. It's literally just not possible to be productive 
all of the time. And the worst thing you can do is get down on yourself and feel bad about yourself for being like a total legitimate, just human being and not being able to do everything all day, no matter what. There's a great article I just found that I will link to down below along with a few other resources by the psych psychologist Iris Barzin. It's called The Cycles of Productivity, and she has something great to talk about ebb because when we are so used to the flow, meaning the high productivity time, like it feels so good and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be able to do this all the time and be able to make so much work and I'm going to put a thousand things on my schedule. And then all of a sudden, when it comes to the ebb, you know, the more relaxed, you know, not quite as productive time. We think it's a disaster, but listen to what Iris Barzin has to say about the ebb. Quote, sometimes ebb can feel like a dark time. Think simmering and self-doubt watching Netflix all day. <clears throat> yeah, can relate. But ebb doesn't automatically have to be a time where all the heavy stuff comes out, especially when we simply see it for what it is. A time to slow down and take care of ourselves that will surely be followed by a productive period of flow again. I think that is such a great, great, great thing to remember that when you are having your ebb, you are recharging, especially if you use that time, you know, to not just totally waste away, but to maybe instead of not Netflixing the whole time, maybe you can journal a little bit or just do very light little sketches or, you know, go out and take a little walk or look at some other people's artwork, you know, not necessarily just scrolling, but go see some artwork in some capacity, you know, use that less productive time to maybe, you know, soak up something that will help you in your more productive time. Or sometimes just don't do anything and be okay with taking a nap, having a cup of hot cocoa, you know, petting your dog for a little bit, like, and just realizing that even the times that we're sort of just marinating, we're actually having lots and lots of inspiring ideas, whether they're conscious or subconscious. Now I know saying, Hey, super productive and busy artists. It's okay. If you just sit around and chill sometimes is a lot easier to say than actually do. Like personally, I know that when I get into my ebb time, sometimes I am not super tolerant of myself. And I sit there and I look at my to-do list and I'm like, Oh my gosh, Kaylee, you know, you're never going to get into this next art show. You're never going to get your next YouTube video made. You're never going to, you know, get your next client. If you don't get off your duff and go start working and blah, blah, blah you know, like I definitely trust me, I get filled with self doubt sometimes too. And honestly, what I have come to find is that the best thing you can do is to kind of plan in your ebb time, not to say that you can necessarily schedule in these are the hours that I will definitely feel good. And these are the hours I will definitely need to rest. I mean, you can kind of start to learn how your days look day to day and sort of figure that out. But I mean, just in general, like just make sure you have time that you can be a little bit loose with that you can kind of wiggle with, you know, the best people with their social media, honestly, they do a lot of planning ahead. They do a lot of batch, you know, schedule posting and that kind of thing. Like they're really good at content creation in batches and editing in batches and schedule things so that their output looks really consistent. Even if their actual day to day, minute to minute, you know, week to week is, you know, not super consistent, just like the rest of us. I recently watched a YouTube video by Sarah tapes that I will link down below called how I gained 50 K followers in three months on Instagram. And what I really liked about this video, it wasn't about like, Oh, hashtags and follow and follow. It was more about how to kind of batch produce your content and how to think about what you're going to post sort of while you are creating your artwork. And in such a way, she talks about how one time she even made, I think she said something like three weeks of content in one six hour art making day or something. So for a little bit of inspiration on how to sort of plan your ebb time, um, I would take a look at her video because it is very inspiring as far as understanding that you have your own rhythms and that's okay. And if you plan them ahead, they won't be stressful all of a sudden you won't feel like you're getting behind because you've got all this stuff kind of already in the works and you can do what feels best for you at that moment.
And how do you like my little iceberg landscapes? Definitely something unusual, but it's February. I'm cold, so I figured I'd just lean into it. Obviously, I didn't take these pictures, but my sources are through Pixabay down below. So perhaps next time you are feeling a bit more in your ebb, you can check out this playlist right here of all kinds of helpful little artsy business tips. And then when you are in your flow, you will be ready to get going with all kinds of great ways to expand your business. Thanks for being here today, guys. I will see you next time.